All right, here we go now with the aforementioned. Uh, Tommy, was that Joe Brinkman behind home plate that night? It was, yes. Yes, it was. All right, was he a pitcher's umpire in that situation, or is he a hitter's umpire in that situation? What was his take? Let me hear. Uh, you know, I, w- I would say he was. Uh, he had a, a, a good pitcher strike zone that night. Um, you know, I think he's one of those guys that, um, at least reputation-wise, was you kind of had to go out there and, and kind of establish what you were trying to do and, and feel your way into it. And I think once, certainly once uh, I got into a groove, um, you know, he was. He, I think he got into a groove with me. He sure did. Now, uh, in today's day, they take you out after five innings, which would drive guys like me nuts because we wanted to see you pitch. Did you have anything left? They had rollers there, so I understand it. But did, could you have gone out for the ninth? Did you know that that eighth inning was going to be your last inning? How about that after eight there, your conversation with Bobby Cox? I, I knew after the eighth inning from the standpoint of, you know, we I forget exactly what went on in the seventh inning, but we had a little bit longer offensive inning. Um, and when I went out and threw my warm-up pitches for the eighth inning, uh, I, I, I wasn't nearly as crisp as I had been up to that point in time. Um, and then in that inning, going back over that inning, there was there was one ball that Jim Tomei hit uh, to the warning track in left center field that it was a mistake I got away with. Uh, I think there was another at-bat that might have been uh, a deeper fly ball that it was a mistake I got away with. So I knew that. My warm-ups weren't as crisp. I got away with more mistakes probably than I had had I'd made to that point all night long. So, um, you know, we had Mark Rollers waiting in the wings, and he had a heck of a year that year. So, I, you know, I, I told Bobby after that inning, hey, look, I think I'm done. So, um, I think it was the right thing to do. I mean, Rollers, like I said, he had a great year, and uh, they had the top of the order coming up in the ninth inning, and he made easy work of it. Uh, and how about Game 7? You would have pitched at Yankee Stadium the following year if Maddox had won Game 6. Is that a disappointment that you didn't get a chance to pitch on that great field in that spot in the seventh game of the World Series trying to defend the Braves' title? Yeah, look, I think you <laughs> you always dream of being in a World Series and you always dream of being a guy in Game 7 that pitches the clinching game. Um, unfortunately, you know, we weren't able to get there. And, you know, that's probably the one when, when people talk about our World Series and, and – uh, only winning one and, and what have you, um, you know, we got beat by some pretty good teams in 91 and uh, then again in 92 by Toronto. I think the one against the Yankees in 96 is probably the one that we felt like we let get away, you know, to go into New York and win two on the road um, and then not win another game. I mean, it was obviously hugely disappointing and we had a pretty good lead um, in one of those games in Atlanta that we let slip away. So, I mean, I think that's the one we look at and say, man, we, we kind of beat ourselves in that one. Uh, more so than any other one. But, yeah, that, you know, game seven in Yankee Stadium. I mean, look, as a kid that grew up in Boston, um, not a real Yankee lover as a kid, obviously. Um, that's the kind of stuff you dream about pitching on that mound in a, in a game seven World Series setting. Now, 100%. Game four, 6-1. Who could forget? Walters gave up the home on the lyrics. Two games to one Atlanta. All right, I got to ask a hockey question. Remember, folks, Mr. Glavin was drafted by the L.A. Kings in the NHL. Let's never forget that. This is one of the great athletes you're ever going to listen to. All right, this has got a chance to be an excellent series. Colorado, Tampa, who and why? Let me hear. Go ahead. I, I'm going to take Colorado just because they've got home home ice advantage. Um, and, and they've just been so good all year long. Look, it's, it's hard to bet against Tampa. Um, and, you know, as a, um, a fan of the game, look, I, I respect everything Tampa's done, but I'm tired of them winning. So uh, that may be part of it. But, um, look, they, they've shown uh, they are championship medal. You know, you can get them down, but it's tough to get them out. Uh, Toronto had a chance to knock them out. The Rangers had a chance to knock them out, and they bounced back. So they're going to be tough. But, I, you know, Colorado, I've watched them a fair amount. Uh, they're deep. They're fast. McKinnon's a heck of a, heck of a player. Um, I guess the one thing that I would look at in that series that might be the difference is the goaltending. Uh, Vasilevsky has been so good. Um, you know, Colorado, their starting goaltender was hurt. I don't know if he's going to be back for the series or not, but I think that's one thing to keep an eye on. Excellent point. I, I couldn't have analyzed it better myself, and they pay me to do it. So there you go. All right, Atlanta. Eleven, <laughs> you know that. You were listening to me scream about you half the time when you were with the Mets. Uh, <laughs> all right, you got a, a, the Braves won 11 in a row. Now, let me play, uh, you know me, I'll throw cold water on it. They beat the Diamondbacks, they beat the Rockies, they beat the A's, and they beat the Pirates. And the Braves deserve all the credit in the world. Last year, the defending champs. But maybe we don't really read too much into it. You wanted to win the 11, but it's against the bad 
team. What's your take on that for a sec? Let me hear. Go ahead. Well, I, I, listen, I don't, I don't disagree um, in principle, but I think that's one of the things that uh, when you are a, when you're a team uh, and your, your, your goals are to win uh, and you look at the schedule, um, you know, you, you always know your division to some extent is going to be a dog fight. Um, this year, obviously, the Mets are playing well. Philly's kind of getting things back in gear. Uh, Miami's been hot lately, too. So the division's been playing good baseball. So you kind of expect, all right, you're going to beat each other up a little bit in the division, but you hope to be the team that has the best uh, divisional record, and that separates you to some extent somewhere along the line. But then you look at the games in your schedule that the quote-unquote games you should win. Uh, and the Braves are in a stretch right now of games that it's series that they should win, and they've taken advantage of it. So um, I think anytime you look at a team uh, that disappoints uh, during the course of a year, a lot of times you look at the, those games against teams that you figure on paper they should have beaten and they didn't take care of business. Uh, and, and it's a lot of times is a telling sign. Here you have a case of a team that, that got to a soft part of their schedule uh, and they took advantage of it. Now, I don't even with that, you wouldn't expect to go in and and win. Uh, what are they at? 13 in a row or 11 in a row now. And, you know, you look at it and think, well, OK, we're going to win series. We can win these series. But to rattle off as many games in a row as they have, I don't think you ever anticipate doing that. But um, it's come at a good time. You know, I mean, they're, they're, they're a deep lineup. Ronald's gotten going, obviously. Uh, so that helps the lineup a lot. And their pitching, starting pitching has been really good. Very good. All right. Now, I'm sure you're a scratch golfer. You play lefty or righty, Tom? You play lefty in golf? I play left-handed, yeah. I'm pretty dominant left-handed across the board. All right, well, sometimes these lefties play right-handed in golf, and most of these <laughs> courses are set up for the right-handed, not the lefty. What do you expect here at the American Century? What's the format? I know you're there to play. Give me a little scouting report. I'm into that. Go ahead. Yeah, so it's, it's a staple fruit format, which, you know, birdies are, uh, are big. Um, you know, uh, I think the difference out there is uh, you have a blow-up hole, a double bogey, you have to give points back, and that's never good. So uh, you try to avoid the big holes. Uh, you try to make as many birdies as you can, and and look, Tahoe is a great golf course, obviously very scenic, beautiful. Uh, but there's, um, you know, there are a lot of gettable par fives on that golf course. And there are a lot of par fours that are are short wedge shots. Uh, I think where the course gets you is the greens, uh, some small greens, some undulated greens that are fast. So if you get it on the wrong side of the hole, you can be in trouble. So, you know, in, in my experience in playing in this tournament, your, your scoring wedges are at a premium. You have to hit the ball well with those clubs because you're going to have a lot of them. Um, you know, you got guys out there like Tony Romo and Mulder and Smoltzy and some of these guys that just annihilate the ball. So the par fives, a lot of them turn into par fours for those guys. I'm not in that game, obviously, but, um, you know, it, it's it's your short wedge game. If you're, if, you're, if you're dialed in with your short wedges and you can hit the ball uh, near the hole, you got a chance to score well. Excellent job, Tom. I'm sure you will. We'll keep in touch. Thanks for a few minutes here today. Appreciate it very much. I appreciate it, Chris. Thanks.